Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome back to some more old school magic here. Now this is a game from popular demand or a vote from the last uh, match. And this is Skynet, my new brew against the five color Ernam Gedan. And it's going to be a bit odd because the usual Skynet deck it, uh, it is also an Armageddon deck but actually the brew I brought with me here it's a slightly different tweak and it doesn't have any Armageddon. Instead, it has a single winter orb. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go over the decks real quick here. So this is Skynet Mark 101. Um, a slightly different tweak than the last time we were here, but it's the same colors. It is blue and white and black. And it makes use of... Uh, a bunch of artifacts here, primarily icy manipulators, and its creature base is Fortress Guildians, four sushis, and a Tetravis, and obviously the four factories. It's fully powered, and it has all uh, the dual lands in the three colors that it plays, and a couple of Felder Stones as well. Now, it also uses uh, some copy artifacts, and an animate did uh, in, in there just as a test. Um, and then it plays a bunch of disenchants and a dust to dust with the winter orb. And I think there should perhaps be another winter orb in there. Um, but um, at the moment, it's just uh, the dust to dust is used just to crack the other guys, Moxon and Artifact Mana, uh, so that the winter orbs and uh, sometimes Armageddon's can be more lethal. There are no cities of brass here. Actually, there are no uh, La um, Arabian Night cards in the deck besides the Library of Alexandria, so it's very different than Composition A, uh, the other deck that went up against uh, Enamgeddon in the previous recording. And that makes it possible to have a main deck city in a bottle. Now I only own one and I think it's sometimes in poor taste to play more than one, but who am I kidding, right? If, I mean, if I owned them, I'd probably have them in my sideboard, the other ones, especially if, if I was going into a tournament with this. Uh, but I'm still tweaking it. It also has a single abyss, and that's very nice with uh, robots because, uh, yeah, robots, uh, they won't be targeted by the abyss, so it's just a removal, uh, a continual removal uh, that will just, yeah, kill creatures that are not my own. A single source to plowshares is there just as a spot removal, but it's very light on it, it instead using the nuclear winter that is the icy manipulators. And, uh, yeah, just trying to overpower the other player with his robots and um, holding him back with another part of Skynet's nuclear winter uh, that is the winter orb and sometimes Armageddon's but in this version uh, it's just a winter orb. So this particular build is um, a test where I'm going lighter on the winter orbs and the Armageddon's and more heavy into the robots with the additional animate dead and um, an additional copy artifact. Now let's go over the Armageddon here. Um, I've already gone over this in the previous uh, match, so I won't go over it in detail here, but it is a five color Unam Gedan deck, um, working with trying to overpower the other guy with some fat mid range beaters and then playing an Armageddon. It is uh, fully powered as well, or close to it anyway. I think it lacks the Lotus and the Time Twister, but I'm not even sure he would play with a Time Twister. He might, I don't know. And then it plays all the colors, so it has access to Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor, and also a Fireball and Wheel of Fortune. So uh, yeah, uh, just a lot of lines of play here. So let's see what happens. This is round number one. So round number one with Skynet on the left here. And the five color Unum Gedon on the right. Just having a quick roll off. Okay, here we go. Underground, underground sea into a sapphire. And Skynet always makes use of mana drain and sometimes counter magic as well. So I can counter now, at least in theory. And a couple of Moxen here from Unum Gedan and a Serenity Be Free turn one. No counter spell from uh, Skynet. And Skynet doesn't have the spot removal as Composition A has from the previous game. Skynet is uh, more controlish and yeah, it has those icy manipulators there instead. So it's a bit of a different situation here. If that Ice Manipulator is not removed, it can tap down that Serenity Befreed and it will do damage to him each turn, the Serenity Befreed will. But if you can disenchant the Icy, this Serenity Befreed will obviously just get in. 
And now a Filverstone is coming out. Yeah, he has quite the mana ramp in that deck. And I don't have any mana source on tap, so I can't really use the Icy Nibulator on a certain Befreed yet, and it gets in. But next turn, provided I have a mana up after casting, uh, I can use the Icy on the certain Befreed. Okay, counterattacking with the Mistress Factory here, and it gets immediately sourced to Plowshirt. The life from the factory bringing me back to 19 life here. I suppose I gotta draw those Sorcerer Plowshares out uh, eventually anyway. Strip mine coming out. Yeah, I wonder what I want. I could strip mine the Tundra, I suppose, to crack him out of uh, his only dual land. But I think I just want the extra mana from the strip mine at this point. So he attacks with the Sandy Befreed and I tap it before it can attack. So in a way, the Sandy Befreed is working for Skynet now, just pinging the Enumgeddon player each turn. Enumgeddon taps out now. Oh, there's a Sarah Angel coming out. Oh yeah, and he keeps that City of Brass in the bottom uh, untapped there. And I don't have any white mana, so uh, I don't know. Okay, there's one. Hmm. There is a tiny bit of removal in white in Skynet. Okay, yeah, so we're balancing here. That's one of them. Now, he was on the verge of overrunning my Ice Manipulator with that army of creatures there, so just trying to keep him off my back here. I have to discard an Underground Sea from my hand, though. So now he needs to start over with the creature army or remove the ice. Okay, there's a sushi as a counter move here. Skynet building up its counter attack after that balance. But Unumgen just keeps on going, bringing out an Unumgen. That's a 4 5 creature. So it can overpower my sushi. He does provide forest walk to the sushi whenever it's the Unumgen's upkeep. But look, the Unumgen doesn't have any forests. He only has a city of brass for green mana. So um, that won't have any effect at this point. But I suppose I can tap the Unumgen down with the IC and get in. Now, even more machines coming out of Skynet here, of the production line. It's a Triskillion. Passing the turn back to Unumgen. Yeah, he gives a sushi forest walk here. Not that it will matter, but he might play a forest, I suppose. Okay, then sorts to plow the Triskillion. And I like to just let it rip <laughs> as a fast effect, shooting him for three points of damage. And then he attacks with the Unamjin, and I am tapped out, so I can't use the IC, and I can't really block him with the Sushi, or I can, but I'll use the su I'll lose the Sushi for no gain. So I just elect him to counterattack him instead. And I am ahead in life anyway, so this is fine. Ooh, another IC coming out here. Even more control for Skynet. Now in his upkeep, I'm tapping his <laughs> Unamjin and City of Brass. So he takes a point of damage from the City of Brass, and he can't use it in his main phase. And Unumgeddon plays a factory, so he has two creatures as well now. But it seems like Skynet is grinding slowly into a control position here. Being able to keep him locked down with the Ices and get in with the Sushi. Sort of like holding his hands and slapping him. Oh, I insist on recall here. Very lucky draw. Um, getting ahead in cards. And I had we have both emptied our hands, so it's pretty key at this point. Using the strip mine on the factory, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, it will free up an icy manipulator that can be used to tap the city of brass now. And it's kind of puts down a mistress factory of its own. Okay, mind twisting for one here. We can't really see what was discarded though. Sushi coming over for another four points of damage. And in his upkeep, the icy is tapped down, the Urnum Gen and the City of Brass doing a one point of damage, so he's at four points of life, forfeiting the game here. Yeah, next turn the Sushi uh, would be on a post and get in for four points of damage. Uh, that's game. Skynet being uh, slightly more lucky here, uh, being able to utilize those icy manipulators to just lock down the opponent. Uh, instead of removing his creatures, letting him do da uh, take damage from the Serenity Befreeds, and um, tapping Cities of Brass for extra damage. This is round number two, and we don't use sideboards here, and it's actually not fair for my opponent, because um, he could sideboard in Dust to Dust or Energy Flux, but I don't have a sideboard for Skynet yet, so I need to get on the ball in that uh, department uh, and make it happen. I just haven't played that much Magic uh, during the Corona pandemic, so I haven't really been able to playtest it as much as I'd like. 
I'm mulliganing down to six cards here in round number two though. We're just continuing with our main decks. And he does have four distant chance at least, so that's pretty nice. But yeah, after this evening, I'll sit down and try to figure out a first draft for a sideboard for Skynet. It's high time. So mulligan down to six cards here, keeping the hand, and he's on the play. Factory into Sapphire and Time Walking, turn one here. City of Brass, and okay, coming over with the Factory, and I can't really respond, I don't even have a land drop yet. So just taking two points of damage, I can't do anything. Skynet's turn, cut, putting down a Scrubland and a Mox Jet and a Mox Emerald. Oh, wow, and a Soldering into a Sushi. What a start, but it's almost my entire, entire hand here as I have mulliganed all in on a turn one Sushi. Okay, it's getting softer plush yet. And he attacks again, so I just get back to 20 points of life here. Now he should take a damage from that City of Brass though. Oh, Tundra into Ancestor Recall. Yeah, I think that was the last card in hand. Uh, pretty good hand. So we're drawing into uh, a lot of stuff and we are mana fixed here. Uh, that's a Mox Ruby coming out as well. So I don't really mind any Armageddon's from his side at this point anyway. Um, um, and he remembers here that he forgot to take a damage just before and takes two points of damage uh, instead. So he's at 18 and that's an Urnam Jin. Now, I think I only have two or three cards left in hand. Uh, at this point, really considering oh, if I should strip mine, strip mining his Savannah, to crack him out of green mana, or maybe not. Yeah, he has a City of Brass. I'm cracking this factory instead. Um, okay, then disenchanting the Sapphire, really trying to put pressure on his mana base here. Okay, he comes over swinging with you, and I'm doing, I have no answer for it. As said, I don't have much spot removal in this deck, but. There's an abyss. <laughs> That's a single one in the deck, but um, and it takes gets rid of the Urnum Jin. Now he is pretty starved for mana. Another City of Brass coming out here, and when there's an IC, tapping his City of Brass in his upkeep, so I can put even more pressure on his mana base and do damage to him on top. Pretty hard to box him in mana wise, though. He has so much land in that deck, so just keeps on rolling here. But even though I don't have a creature, that single IC does have offensive capabilities uh, because of those cities of brass. And uh, it does remove his uh, his mana production each turn. It's a pretty nice card, IC Manipulator. I really like it, and I like it as a kit as well. Another city of brass. It's three cities of brass at this point. He can't really play any creatures until he has gotten rid of that abyss. Um... Such a strong card in a robot deck, but I only only own one. And I mean it's very, very good against Urnum Gedan as well because it'll oh copy artifact on the ice emulator. Okay, he doesn't chance the Abyss. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Abyss is pretty good against Urnum Gedan because uh, it removes his mana creatures as well each turn. So it's just pretty brutal. Tapping two cities of brass in his upkeep here, uh doing two points of damage to him each turn from those ices. Now there's an Urnum Gen after the Abyss is gone. So I need to lock down an IC just to take care of that. So in his upkeep, I tap his Urnum Jin and one of the Cities of Brass doing a single point of damage. And another Urnum Jin coming out. So I guess I gotta use both ICs on them now. So I can't ping him anymore. Unless there's something here. Ooh, a to Travis coming out. Now it's a 4-4 fly and it can split up uh, into 1-1 one, one flying creatures. And it's okay, I just tap down his Urnum Jins for good measure. Now in my mind I'm picturing one of those robot aircrafts from the Terminator movies. <laughs> Ted Travis kind of looks like one, if you use a bit of imagination I suppose. Now he's asking me about how the how it works, if, I, if it can split up into uh, smaller flyers uh, as a fast effect, but it can't. I can only use it in my upkeep. So. Um, he just dis uh, he sorts the plush as it uh, and then puts down a bird here um yeah because otherwise uh, yeah he wanted to know if i could just uh, split them out uh, if he tried to sort the plush it uh, but uh, yeah it can't so passing the turn right back here tapping down both urnum gins again Uh, 
and oh, an angel coming out. Okay, so three creatures now overrunning the icy defense. Okay, drawing into a time walk, using it immediately. Trying to dig for something here to handle it. Okay, another Terminator coming out here with its guns. Passing the turn. And in his upkeep, I'm tapping down the Sarah Angel and the Mont uh, Dieu I should tap my own Isis now. Yeah, okay, here we go. So it attacks with the Yonam Jin, I just let it in. I can't attack, I can't really block because I'm only a 4 4 with that Triskillian. But he has to give my Triskillian a forest walk, and he, as he has a savannah and a tropical island, the Tetrabus can just get in now. He can't even block it, even if he chose to be untapped. So getting in for four points of damage here. Is it seven points of life? So untapping his army, I'm tapping two of them. He needs some answer here. So he attacks with the Unamjin. One last hurrah, because I can get in now and then just shoot him with the Triskillian. That'll be seven points of damage. I could, on top of that, tap two of his Cities of Brass, and that would put him to nine points of damage. Oh, my hand, nothing really there. Only lands and a Winter Orb. Um, so I uh, just kept them back in, uh, in order to, if he wanted to play an Armageddon, I would be ready for that. So yeah, Skynet uh, took this game. But I wonder how they'll measure up to each other after sideboard. Uh, we'll have to test that next time. Um, he has a lot of artifact destruction in his sideboard, as far as I remember, and the four main deck disenchants. So that would be pretty brutal against me. Uh, against him, I would likely take in more creature removal, uh, like swords to plowshares and uh, stuff like that. If I had access to it, I would definitely get another Hepis in. Uh, but yeah, uh, what can you do? You gotta play with what you have, right? And I only have one. And with the prices, I'm not really sure when I'll get another. And if that's even possible without letting go of something else. And yeah, difficult choices. Anyway, next up is a Mono uh, War Brew uh, between white and red. And um, after that, we'll finish off the last few games from this evening as well. And that means Skynet against Nyasu, Composition A against Nyasu, and Composition A against Blue and Red and White Counterburn. And I've been contacted with some, by some people um, that plays a seven point singleton format. It sounds very interesting, and they've been kind enough to send me a few games uh, from their top eight. And I'll be more than happy to go over them, over them and, and watch them with you guys and uh, comment on them. Once we get there, I'll put down some links to the group and um, the rules of this particular format. So a bit of a mixed bag between mono brews, budget brews, and fully powered uh, decks and this seven point singleton to look forward to here. So thank you for watching this particular video and I'll catch you in the next one.